So why don't you invest some of those money you saved into buying a calculator, learn how to count, and finally acknowledge how good you have it. Here we go again, and it's about to get bad for you this time. So this man actually believes that Americans are not more privileged than the rest of the world. One, I never made the argument that Americans are not more privileged than the rest of the world, so I don't know what you were listening to. Considering that A, the dollar amount of a welfare program speaks nothing to the actual treatment of human beings in a place, and B, the welfare checks are higher in America because America can afford to make the welfare checks higher. But the financial situation of a given country being better than that of another country does not mean that's the end of the story, shut up, accept your privilege. We must take into account how much money it actually costs to live in a given society in order to determine whether or not these things are disproportionate. And then he never cared to actually determine whether or not the things are disproportionate, because for that you need to know how to count. First he took numbers from my video, that's the average salaries he's supposed to compare cost of living to. And here are his numbers, now let's use the concept of subtraction unknown to him. So in the end of the month, average citizens from Mexico, Ukraine and Vietnam are left with negative sum of money, while Egyptians are living their best life, living large life, with $265 left. But apparently I'm dealing with a person who sits alone in the room and slaps his phone on camera instead of argumentation. And if you are so offended by me mentioning welfare checks, why are you continuing to use it in your argumentation? Oh right, because if we look at average income in America, it won't help your narrative. Okay, that was a lot. Now this shit's about to get crazy. Like I stated before, you fundamentally misunderstood what I said. The United States GDP per capita is $70,248. Egypt's GDP per capita is $3,698. Of course the United States is gonna have welfare checks at $600 plus, and if Egypt tried to do the same, it would be unsustainable economically. But again, that does not mean that people in America just have no problems and need to shut up and accept their privilege. And the fact that you try to make this argument for black Americans in particular is fucking hilarious. But here, I've done the job for you. Any metric you want. Average income in USA, average salary, median income by age. Subtract your cost of living from any of those. Would you have a negative sum? No, you wouldn't. Now, let's break everything down. Let's take a look at those sources you cited. Starting with this one, worlddata.info. This source is calculating the average gross annual wage per full-time employee in the United States. Keep that in mind. Now, this source talks about average salary, setting at 6228 per month. If you're an American and your alarm bells aren't ringing right now, they should be. Now, let's look at this source from First Republic. They're pulling from data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that's talking talking about median usual week earnings for full-time wage and salary workers. Now you may be wondering why I'm drawing distinctions between the terms I'm using. Well, sorry if that annoys you. That's because of the key distinctions between salary and income and average and median. A salary is a fixed amount that an employer has signed and agreed to pay you over the course of a year. Meaning anyone who's making a salary is working full time. And income is just the total amount of money one brings in for the year. So using salary as a measurement is only taking into account those who are working full time jobs with an agreed to salary. Which means that all those numbers are taking into account roughly two thirds of our workforce. The remaining third or 20 to 30 million Americans are working part time and still bringing in income but they aren't accounted for in the salary measurements. Now let's talk about average versus median. I may not be able to account but allow me to use my notoriously great American education to explain to you what the fucking average is. While the two seem similar, they're very different. Averaging in this case would be if we added up every American's income from the poorest individual to Jeff Bezos and then divided it by the amount of Americans there are and see what each person got equally or on average. Finding the median in this case would be taking everyone's income from the poorest American to Jeff Bezos and finding what the absolute middle value is that divides them into the lower half of income and the upper half of income. Or if you need another example of what I mean, read this and then look at these values down here. Because Jordan makes so much more money than everyone else, the average income is 177,000, while the median income would be 40,000. So the median number is more insulated from variables like billionaires. Because if you put me and Jeff Bezos in a room, our average income is going to be like $60 billion. I can assure you I don't have that. But what's a figure we can use that determines the absolute middle bar for everyone in the United States, regardless of whether or not you're working part-time or full-time? That would be median income. And according to the Census Bureau in 20 19, that number for individuals was 31,133. Now, why is that significant? Because if we take that number, we divide it by 12 to find your median monthly income. We get $2,594 as the median that working people in America are making as individuals. If we then use the concept of subtraction and take away that cost of living, we're left with $381. Maybe that's why most Americans can't afford a $1,000 emergency with their savings. So yeah, Americans are still in the green for the year. But oh wait, seems to me you forgot the premise of your video. See, I forgot to take into account black people. Hey, remember when you tried to use this chart to show that America's actually not racist and that black people are just lazy and look how privileged they are even though they're at the fucking bottom of this chart? Well, this is measuring median household income in the United States by ethnic groups. So let's take these numbers at face value and use that 35,000 at the bottom. And using the numbers from my original video, we can see that family cost of living is $5,003 a month. So let's take that 35,000 for black Americans divided by 12 for monthly. And we see $2,916. But oh wait, this is 
for households. So when we subtract that $5,003 for cost of living, oh shit, looks like black Americans are 2,000 in the negative. But you know what, frankly, I don't believe your numbers. Let's use some updated ones. In 2021, the median black household income in the United States was $46,400 divided by 12 for monthly. We get $3,866. That's good, except for subtracting the 5,000 for cost of living. And oh shit, black Americans are $1,136 in the negative. So again, assuming that money denotes privilege, why are other groups not privileged when their cost of living exceeds their salary, but black Americans still are somehow? But his next argument is just golden. Hence why Oppression Olympics is a dumb game to play. Dumb game to play, my man? Look who's talking. You Americans created the Oppression Olympics, victimizing your black population to the unimaginable levels of absurdity. Notice how you didn't play anything I said before that part? You know, like when I directly asked you, would you consider those Middle Eastern refugees privileged compared to a Southeast Asian kid who's gonna die in the same village under piles of trash? And how that's the very reason why Oppression Olympics are dumb to play because at this point you're just going to be finding the one person who can lay claim to be most oppression and then everybody else has to shut up about their problem. Because it is both possible to be born an American, which comes with a lot of privileges, and also be treated like shit in America. Much in the same way that just because the kid in the hypothetical that I mentioned has it worse off than the Middle Eastern refugee, that doesn't mean that the Middle Eastern refugees should shut up and never complain about their treatment. That's how we got Black Cleopatra and Queen Charlotte in the first place. Black Greeks and Black Scandinavians. That's your whole game. We wouldn't care about your whole existence if you wouldn't force it on us. If you stopped culturally appropriating other countries' history. If you stopped stealing from it. Oh, oh, okay. So you got ass mad that they casted a biracial black woman to play a queen whose race is ambivalent considering that race in today's society is completely different than race in Cleopatra's time, then decided that there's an epidemic of black cultural appropriation, even though we hear fucking nothing from y'all when white people do the same shit, and then work backwards from your conclusion to try to prove how privileged black people are, and that's why they feel like they're entitled to everybody's culture. Sorry, bucko, I don't give a fuck about a Netflix docudrama. I could hit you over the head for 30 years about citations over systemic racism, but you probably aren't gonna listen to them, nor do I feel like it at this point. Because have you ever stopped to consider that Maybe, just maybe, the deleting or erasure or whitewashing of an entire culture in America is probably the reason why many black Americans grow up with mythologized figures of power that they like to tie themselves to. Nevertheless, no matter how much backflipping and sidestepping you do, you will never be able to disprove the fact of systemic discrimination of America, and you will never be able to disprove the fact that black Americans have been systematically cut out of receiving a lot of aspects of this American privilege that you keep going on about. So do me a favor, get out of your feelings about a damn documentary, go look up what the hell you're actually talking about, and further your understanding and education, not out of spite and political points, but out of knowledge and trying to grow, okay? Go eat some cereal or some shit.